up today so we can watch what happens. You can send a daily email or a weekly email summary. So if you don't want anything flying around, you can just summarize that on a daily or weekly basis. And if you do that, you set up the time frame that that's going to happen. So I think that should be enough for us, and we'll go ahead and save yeah. that. What's the desktop work? Okay, there's a, there's a couple of them. Uh, you know how when uh, you get a new email and you get a little alert box, it's kind of like that, but Great Plains will actually send one to your desktop. So your choice is to get that and the email? Sure. Or can you just get the email without the desktop? Sure. Alert? Okay, so if we go back, uh, we've saved that and go back to the administration. We now have uh, the purchase order approval, the one that we set up previous, or I set up previously, is not enabled. And here's our new one right here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go into Great Plains and I think this is going to work. Uh, I know we had a lot of trial and error about restarting Great Plains after you set the workflow. So if this doesn't work, that's what's, what's going to happen. So I'm kind of warning in advance here. I think this is going to work for us. You'll notice immediately that the purchase order transaction screen has a little different look and feel. So you've got a new uh, bar up here that messages can go into. You have a save for later, submit for approval, and you have a workflow history over here. So does that history stay attached to the document? Yes. Forever, you can see, you'll be able to see the approvals forever. Yep. The yep. So if you have a 15-step approval chain, you'll see all that, and it has even uh, a way you can expand out and see what that approval chain looks like. So we just have to fill this line out a little bit for this purchase order. And now we, we can do one of two things. We can save it for later. We're going to come back and, and edit that, or we can submit it for approval. So we'll go ahead and submit that for approval. And you get a, a little message here, and you can add your own comment to the approver. So when he gets that, um, you know, he'll understand what's going on here. And then you can also attach a high importance to it or a low importance to it or just a normal. So however you'd like to attach that. And we'll go ahead and submit that. So now if everything's set up right, this is kind of where we hold our breath a little bit. Okay, so there's the first notification that I got from Outlook. So if I go to Outlook, I have a new... Uh, email here, and you can see I've been kind of playing with this a little bit. <clears throat> and we have a summation of what's happening here. So the subject is this is the purchase order, it's been assigned, description, the task due date, the comments, we need these ASAP. We can edit the task or we can view the document and we can see the uh, workflow history and status. So if you want to view the document, this is one of the ways that you don't have to be in Great Plains to actually work on these things. So it actually brings up a SharePoint rendition of the purchase order. Now we're actually in SharePoint right now. You can see this is SharePoint right up here. And we got to this out of Outlook. So technically the approvers don't have to be in Great Plains if, it, if that's an, and maybe they don't want to be for some reason. You just want to have them outside, or you're low on licenses. So there's a couple of reasons why you may want to do that. Now you can approve this right inside of Great Plains, or as you'll see in a second, another place.
Okay, so that's the message that we, who uh, was an originator of the purchase order, gets because we, we wanted notification that it had been assigned. So now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, switch over to the other user and see what happened to the GP workflow, who is the approver. So on the screen for a second, those of you that are viewing remotely, you're going to we're going to switch to the other user, so it'll take a second to uh, show that screen. So just be patient with us for a second. Okay, so uh, let's get this. Uh. Okay, for those of you now on the call, you should be able to see the uh, GP workflow user screen. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into Outlook. And we've got a workflow message here, uh, and it's from, we set up a, a, an email user called Workflow Manager at Premier Computing, so we can kind of see who these are coming from, and we have a purchase order approval needed for the 2077. So here's the email that the GP workflow user got, and it looks quite a bit the same as the one that we got from the notification. So at this point, uh, we can uh, do a number of things. We can edit this task. Again, this is going to open up SharePoint, hopefully. OK, so this is what this will look like inside of SharePoint. And your approval is requested on the 2077 purchase order. So what we'll do is we'll go into Great Plains and we'll look for that purchase order. So now you'll notice that for this user, since he is the approver, we have information up here in this a hierarchy bar, and we've got different actions we can take. Approve, reject, request change, and delegate. So what we want to do is we'll go ahead and approve, and you can uh, make some changes to the approver's days to act and add comments and attach uh, priority to it. We'll just do a vanilla approve here. And that should be done. And I don't think that this user will receive any other email. It won't. But the other user, the, the, the Perry user, will receive another email that it was approved. OK, so we're going to switch back to the other presenter here. Okay, so now if we look at uh, Outlook, okay, we've got we got actually got two more emails here that it was approved. So now what we want to do is we want to go in and look at that purchase order and look at the workflow history associated with that workflow.
Okay, so now we have the workflow system showing the steps approved and the initial step, the other step, and what's going on right now. So the workflow is complete. Now you can visualize this history right here, and so it gives you the path that it, it flows through. So this, for this uh, item, it doesn't make too much sense to use it, but you can, in theory, create quite a complex approval process, and this would help you follow what's happened on that. Questions so far? We liking it? Um, is workflow going to be available on other Windows security teams, like on like the item card? <coughs> or Did you hear anything about it at Convergence? They are going to enhance their <coughs> And another thing is if you want to make a recommendation, you know you can go out on the website and you can place there to make a recommendation. So <coughs> document it, put it in there. And it'll be a yes. So the workflow ride on SharePoint always, or? It's a combination of both. You yeah, it, it needs, it needs one version of SharePoint to run, and so if you have an older server, you have to use SharePoint Server. If you have a newer server, you can use some of the services in, on the server itself and not have to run a full-blown SharePoint server. Yeah. yeah. Um, Go ahead. I thought I'd seen uh, a distributed requisition uh, where they could enter, anyone could enter requisition from SharePoint. Well, there is a requisitions yeah. manager that will work, you know, with with SharePoint. That's a separate module. It's a great point. Yeah, you yeah. want to talk about that a little bit, Rob? Yeah, yeah, it's actually um, same logic. Right? <coughs> same logic. What, what Brand is referring to, and you might want to make the comment or question uh, to the people that are online. But there's two pieces of this. If you're using the requisition management part of the SharePoint, I mean, we were. I could actually show that later if we get time, but. Uh, so that's a proactive methodology of allowing, and actually Dave, you use this extensively in a way. Um, it's a it's a way of starting the process without even being a great plans user. It's called requisition management. Because so everything we did here had to originate in great plans. Yes, this but is true. what we're talking about here is would originate distributed in, in requisition management without seed licenses. Exactly correct. So it's two separate deals. But once it gets to a certain point in the SharePoint requisition management portal, it says promote this to a PO, then it's going to come in and fill in the process that Perry's just showed you here. If you choose to have both of those enabled, but you, I mean, it, it may not be needed to have both of those, but you could. Now you just drop down to the PO. And yeah. And do your thing. Yep. Yeah. So Perry's right. I mean, it may be that you just want one or the other, but frankly, you can do both if you choose to do so. Okay. Other questions? <clears throat> okay, so uh, this uh, seemed to work, and you can see that if you don't set this up right, you'd have emails flying everywhere. And so you probably want to really plan this and, and probably do maybe a test case before you enable this, you know, for everybody. And it could get kind of messy, so you really want to plan what you're doing on this. Yeah, but what I'm saying, say you do 100 POs a day, would you want 100 emails or would you want one email not by 100? Yeah. Yep. Okay, so we created a new workflow, and we uh, created the, the uh, purchase order approval, and later on we'll go into a little bit more uh, detail of, of the workflow. We're just going to look at a little bit more information now. So uh, Great Plains.